Hello, and welcome with Oliver to Morning. episode 15. He's going to show us about brushes, and we're going to kind of do the interview as we learn. So, win win. Um, so, Oliver is a makeup artist, he's an esthetician. Correct. You do work for um, photo shoots, mm -hmm. and you also do kind of um, like facials and things in your studio, which is where we are now. Yes. Um, so you're in my studio on Capitol Hill, and I um, do facials, treat facial treatments, um, depending on whatever your skincare concern is, um, is something that I kind of help balance or take care of, or if it's something that you want to see or improve, I help with that as well. Um, I also do makeup. Um, I do a lot of editorial, fashion shows. Um, catalog lookbooks, um, but then also lessons. So this is sort of kind of what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna teach Erin um, some of the pro slash consumer um, brushes that me as a professional who is on set all the time, I have like a million brushes. Well, really more like, I think I just counted over 105. Wow. Which seems like a lot, but in my head I'm like, hmm, I could always use more. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, the brushes I'm going to show you and the tools I'm going to show you today are um, tools that I think a consumer needs. Um, maybe not all of them, but for most of the basic everyday challenges that um, you will come across with makeup. So you don't need everything, but these are a solid, a solid go-to. And um, I love brushes, but I also use my hands and my fingers and you know whatever gets the job done, um, especially when you're on set. Like if I'm doing some crazy funky stuff, sometimes brushes just are too clean, and so I'll use my fingers. Um, actually, last time I did a sh the last shoot I did, I posted on Instagram with uh, my model was wearing like feathers and this pleated jacket, and oh, yeah. had like a white thing on. Yes. I don't know if you saw that. Mm -hmm. I actually used feathers. I dipped it oh, in. Oh no! Yeah, I dipped it in the the white makeup. And then, hi Tiffany. Hi Janine. Hi Dad. <laughs> and I just did this morning, everyone. <laughs> Um, so yeah, like tools are, are, are help get you to the get you to the finished look, but um, tools can range from brushes, your fingers, sponges, um, feathers, even. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna Great. show these to you. So I'll take these off, and I have to say that the thing that I like about following ever, I mean following Oliver, <laughs> there's a thing I said ever over here because Oliver does use ever, and he also uses lime white. So are those you are his light medium. Light medium, yeah. And I have that on with a little bit, about two parts light medium and one part uh, clear. And are you oil free or hydro lift? Um, I use both, yeah, oh, but okay. I would say maybe oil free. So, um, but what I like about following Oliver, besides your wonderful personality, which is always fun. Thank you, thank um, you. You did a great Moana for Halloween, which <laughs> I encourage you to check him out. Um, but I love the editorial stuff, you know, it's just really fun that, that you're like, you know, you're a really you're a true artist and it's not, um, you know, there's like the makeup for makeup, but then there's like this editorial side, which is just um, so much creativity and so much beauty. And That's so funny because um, I, like this was mentioned to me yesterday about how I'm not just a makeup artist, I am an actual artist, I like to create. Exactly. And um, I never really thought about it. I just love makeup, makeup is fun. I love all the transformative qualities of it. But it's nice to hear and affirming to hear that, you know, an outside perspective. So thank you for that. Um, well, with that being said, we're just going to get started. So Erin okay. doesn't have anything on her face other than um, Daylight Tinted Moisturizer by Ever. Right. So I'm actually going to um, support that by putting another layer of moisture. Um, one of the key things as far as makeup application goes is you want to have a good base. So if your skincare is janky or your skin is janky, your makeup look <laughs> is gonna be janky. Um, so even when models come in my chair and they say, oh, I use moisturizer, unless they have a sensitivity, I always put more moisturizer on. Oh, so you have daylight on, your yep. skin obviously feels great because you're using an amazing line, <laughs> which I love, like I, I, I really do love ever, so. Um, I'm gonna be using some of the Ever stuff. I should be in camera when I say this. I'm gonna be using the Ever stuff. Um, I did want to show you um, the tools of the trade. So here they are. Hmm. I don't know if you can skip. Well, we can flip it around too. 
Oh, can you? Mm -hmm. oh, let's do that. <laughs> Hi. Um. There you go. Oh, technology. But let's try to keep it horizontal, just so it's not confusing. Okay. So there's some face brushes. You've got a, a powder blush, um, a foundation powder brush. Well, it's actually a powder brush, but it's the shape of it is a little more unique. It helps fit into the contours of the face. Then your angled blush brush, and then you've got a foundation brush, buffing brush, um, a crease blending brush, large eyeshadow brush, a buffing brush. It's, I don't know if you can see that. Like it's, oh yeah, mm -hmm. do that Instagram. So it's mm -hmm. rounded, and um, what this does, it gets really into the nooks and crannies. So if you really need to buff something in, that's what it would be. Then you've got a slanted brush, which I use for blending. Little concealer brush, it's just a miniature version of that. And this one, um, I don't really know what to call it, but it's kind of like a liner brush. It is a little bit rounded, so it's good for like underneath the eye. Slanted brow brush with your dual end mascara wand. And then the lip brush. Basically, it's a flat eyeshadow brush, so you can use it for shadow as well as liner or lips. Then I love this brush for consumers. This is a angled pointed definer brush and that's good for like eyeliner. And the reason why it's angled is because then depending on where your hand position is, this gets right into the eye without having to, or gets into the eye so that your hands are ergonomic. So you don't bust your wrist. <laughs> and then you have a brow brush, or I'm sorry, an angled liner brush. Similar to this, but this one's flat, straightforward. So there's that. And of course my spatulas, because I have to be sanitary. And then my sponges. This one is the Ever, and this one is the Limelight. I like this one because it has a flat edge, and then it has this small pointy tip. Mine's been squished, which is why it's indented. <laughs> and then of course my palette. So this is awesome, if you wouldn't mind holding that. Yes. Goes right on your, your wrist. Cool. So, or wrist, or I like to kind of do it like this, that way I can still hold. Right. But um, I use this because instead of d double dipping, I can use my spatula, mm -hmm. scoop something out, put it on, and work from this, therefore leaving the original safe. All right, let me flip around. So, we're going to start with skincare. I'm going to use... I'll tip it maybe up so that they can see okay. a little bit more of you. There you go. Okay, so I'm gonna take some Hydro Lift. Foundation brush. Boop, boop, boop. And just brush it on. So these are things that you can do yourself. If you're feeling really extra, then you're more than welcome to do everything that I do. But, you know, fit whatever, um, wherever you can and whatever fits your lifestyle. If you've got kids, like a two-year-old, and they're running around, this might not be the, <laughs> the most uh, economical thing to do or, or logical thing to do because your kids are going to want your attention 24-7. So you just brush, brush, brush. And the texture is really smooth. So you can get a nice, smooth application. There's Everything is applied evenly. How does it feel on the face, Erin? Feel, um, moist. <laughs> <laughs> well, how does the brush feel? Oh, very soft. Soft. And that's and these are all synthetic. You wouldn't really believe that they were synthetic, but they are. So they don't. Um, they they can be used for both cream and powder. Now I'm going to take her daylight since she already has some on. I'm only going to take the tiniest tiniest amount. Take my same foundation brush and now apply it to where she needs it. Because this has SPF, I'm pretty much gonna apply it all over. Uh, another thing with brushes is, not only do you get precision, but you actually also use less product. Hmm. So the reason for that is, when you use your fingers, your fingers are skin. Yeah. So it absorbs, just like your face does. So some of that product is actually gonna go on your fingers. Um, when I used to work at Sephora, 
we would always demo things on our hands. And there was a huge difference between my little demo hand and my real hand. <laughs> and my let's just say my demo hand looked younger for sure. That's funny. I have a customer who says she puts she was putting her product on her hand, especially um I think the youthful. Mm -hmm. She would put on her hand and then from there she would apply to her face. And then one day she looked down and she's like Oh my gosh, yeah. like her hand that she used to uh, as kind of her palette like you're using was was showing the difference. Oh yeah. A little trade secret, you always show them this hand because this one is usually the damaged one. If you're a driver, you're ex exposed to sun more often, so this hand gets damaged. So when you do demos, you'll see more results with this. Hmm. I just let the cat out of the bag on that one. <gasps> <laughs> Tell us more secrets. Right? All right, so really didn't do much other than prep her skin. Because she has a tinted moisturizer on, I don't have to do much foundation afterwards. But that's what a foundation brush is used for. Because it's so big, it is um, able to cover the entire surface of her face. And that way you're not spending a lot of time applying foundation. Um, some people like to use their sponge or their finger, but once again, they all, all absorb product. So you don't necessarily want to use that for a product that might cost a lot or where you might use more of it. So I like to use a brush when it comes to that. Now, um, because this is uh, nice and clean and prepped, I'm actually gonna do some uh, holiday eyes on her. Something Ooh. real fun, something sparkly. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna use one of these on ya. Ooh. That's pretty. Yeah, I think this would be really pretty on you. So I'm going to use, and is this the order you go, like um, foundation and then eyes, or? Not all the time. Okay. If I'm doing like a dark eye, I'll definitely do my dark eye first, then the foundation, but okay. for this, I can definitely do foundation first, or complexion first, then eyes, because I'm just gonna do a light wash of color okay. with this. I'm not gonna like oversaturate you. So, um, so I'm gonna take my crease brush, okay? And the, the reason why it's a crease brush is because it fits into the socket of the eye and for blending, okay? I just call it a blending brush because I'll use it on the face for the lips depending on the effect that I'm going for. So for today, I'm gonna use that as an eyeshadow and I'm gonna take this more pearlescent color. Okay, chin up. And here's the trick with brushes. If it's soft, and bendy, your application is gonna be softer. Okay. Unlike a foundation brush, which is stiff, it's going to give you more deposit. So okay. feel the difference between that and say a blush brush. Okay. Oh yeah. Right, so this one's really soft. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna get a soft wash of color, whereas this, because it's stiffer, you're gonna get more color, more deposit. So that's what this is. This is a soft brush. And I'm just pressing it into her skin. I didn't even put primer on. And the payoff is really, really light. Because I don't want it to be super heavy. If I did, then I would have used a different brush. Okay? And this particular color is very much close to her skin tone. So this just adds a nice little glow and shine to her eyes. Open. Yeah. So now we're going to do the other side. So if you have a crease brush, you can totally apply your eye color with it. You don't have to necessarily stick to the I have traditional, one like that. yeah, like the traditional eye brush, which most people use. You can easily use your, your crease blending brush, especially if you like a softer look. Boom, done. Ta -da. <laughs> now also at the same time, you can use the same brush and define your crease a little bit more by adding a darker color. So that's what I'm now gonna do. I'm gonna have you open, look straight ahead. So I'm just using a slightly darker color now. Oh, I forgot, these are magnetic. So I use this one first, and then now I'm using this one. Straight ahead. Let's see, how's that look? Oh 
Yeah, that looks good. I don't have my glasses on, so <laughs> mind you, I can't it. see a thing. If I look like I'm just, I'm blind, and that's why. I am blind. In the same way. Although I've gotten into the habit of putting my glasses in the bathroom for some reason. So from my bathroom to my bedroom, I'm kind of like, <laughs> Can you turn towards me? So I'm using the Limelight Holiday Palette. It's very pigmented, so a little bit goes a long way. So that's another thing to, to know is, what's the quality of your makeup? Is it going to give you a huge payout or is it gonna be so sheer that you have to apply six or seven applications, which some, which some brands do, or they, they're not made very well so that you have to use more of it, even though it's inexpensive or whatever. Um, you end up spending more because you're using more and more frequently and you're buying more frequently. So okay. looking at that, close, close. <laughs> very soft, but you can see that little bit of color just at, it actually brings out the blue in her eyes a lot more than normal. Okay, so now to give her some definer, I'm actually going to let you try this. Okay. Um, Okay, so this is your traditional eyeliner. This is a liquid liner. It has a felt tip um, end, and then it allows you to kind of draw on the eye. Okay. So I'm gonna do a little experiment. I'm gonna have you, as much as possible, let me get you a mirror. <laughs> Try and draw a straight line with that. Do you need your glasses? Uh, no, I can. Okay. I'll try, try to. So uh, just along the top lid? Yep, just the top lid. So I want you to go like, just say like mid la eye to outer eye. Okay. As thin as possible. Okay. Pretty good. Okay, how did that feel? Pretty easy. Okay, so now try that same application, but with this brush. Same place? Yep, just go right over it. I just want to see if it's more comfortable for you. Because everyone's different. Yeah, the angle helps. Right? Because your your wrist and your hand isn't kind of contorted. Right. So this follows the shape, the curvature of your eye and allows you to get that nice straight line without injuring yourself. So there you go, you guys. That's why I like an angled an angled brush. Like this is why I recommend this to consumers versus ergonomics people. Ergonomics. I'm a physical therapist. Ergonomics people. Ergonomics. And then versus this, which still works, but you just have to uh, manipulate your hand a little bit more. So as an artist, I'm actually going to, I can use either. So I'm going to use, use um, the angle just so that you guys can see it in action. So I'm just getting really close to her lash line. I'm not trying to make her super defined. The trick is to actually just make her lashes appear thicker. I need as much help as I can get. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, you know, that's the that's a um, a service that I do a lot of is um, lashes and brows. People just want that fullness you know if anyone had been through the 90s and did the pencil thin everything you know now they're like oh I I need to grow them out and I've been <laughs> trying to do it for the last 20 years so I do tinting and shaping um, to help make it uh, look fuller and of course nowadays there's products that help grow your hair back so whatever works for you but this particular trick with the liner which is super close to the lash line and actually below it allows for the lashes to look thicker. I can get really 
straight too, so let that dry for a moment. Okay, turn this way. I never went too crazy with the brows because I still remembered all the people talking about doing that in the 60s. Oh yeah. And so, and I don't have much brow to begin with, so I didn't want to lose any. You were already on trend even before you knew it, at least for the 90s. Brows are a very serious thing. That's why there's so many brow things out there. Brows are big right now. Brows are huge. I mean, they always have been, but because they, they shape your face. So if you, here's a perfect example. If you don't think brows do anything for the face, you haven't watched a Disney movie. <laughs> because if you notice the bad guy, the bad queen or whomever, the antagonist, look at their brows. Their brows tend to be sharp and like curved um, and it makes them look mean. Whereas the Disney princesses, soft and full and wide apart, there's no hard art. <laughs> Exactly, and they look nice and sweet and innocent, and that's literally what brows do to the face. They can give you an expression, conscious or not, and they can dictate what, you know, you're feeling in a way. Right, from now on, I'm going to demean Bill and Nile brows. There you go. You've got those clients that don't, do, that don't practice. You're like, hold on, let me put on my mean brows right now. <laughs> What do you mean you're not doing your squats or whatever it is you tell them my, to my do? My face is too innocent looking. I need some, <laughs> I need some mean brows. There you go. The power brow. <laughs> All right, so now we just did some liner, and as you can see from um, the film, it just looks like uh, her lashes are thicker. Okay. You see my suddenly beautiful lashes? And then, so for those who do lashes, um, actual... Um, Lashes. Strip lashes, not extensions, but lashes. I encourage you, use this brush, or you can even use the slanted brush, okay? So this slanted brush dipped into a black eye shadow, or brown, whatever your liner color tends to be. Take this brush, dip it into your shadow. This is going to be tricky. So when you're doing this, Chin all the way up to the mirror, looking at the mirror, take your free hand, lift the lid ever so slightly, and then take the slanted brush right into the base of that line. The reason for that is you are creating a more solid seam so that when you put your lashes on, you don't see skin beneath it or underneath it. Mm -hmm. It looks really tacky and it looks really incomplete when there is a line of skin right underneath your lashes and you can see mistakes. And it just doesn't look professional or, or clean actually. You can also do a little trick where I'll take a primer. So this is Limelight's primer. I'll spritz the brush so get it wet, then I'll dip it into whatever shadow I want. So in this case, I'm using the black and I'll do the same trick. And this will now give me more of a liquid liner application, but because it's a primer, it has more longevity. Are they? Here. That's okay. I have a little my cold I'm getting over you guys, so <laughs> it's not Oliver's fault. <laughs> Eyes are tricky. It's not every day you have a stranger poking you in the eye. <laughs> so what do you use at home, Erin? Do you use brushes? Um what do I use? I just use my hands for my moisturizer, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then, uh, and then I do the concealer, and again I probably apply it with my fingers, Finger. and then I blend it with the ever 
blender. Okay, so you use the blender, the small blender brush. Uh -huh. Awesome. And then, um, let's see, I do lashes, I do liner. I had one that was a liner that was like this. It was in a brush mm -hmm. and it was called um, a watercolor liner, which I liked, but it's a little bit fussier. So I've gone just to a pencil okay. liner, but yeah. I do it from underneath like the tight lining. Yeah, like so tight lining, that's, I think that just using this brush instead for tight lining um, is easier because you can get so much more surface cover. Right, and that's what I liked about the other one because there was a wider brush like that, mm -hmm. but um, it was just a little bit more finicky. Gotcha. Um, but this is a little easier, like the spray and the powder. Yeah, it it's, like. it's very convenient with this. And the other one was also, since it was a uh, watercolor, it was water soluble, so just like the least thing kind of smeared it. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Because it's very liquid soluble. Soluble, but I do like the the look of it. it had a softer look than mm -hmm. uh, liner. You just have to find the right formula for right. that. Definitely, water soluble is not going to be as long lasting. So, now that we've got her eyes on, we're going to finish the complexion, give her a little bit more coverage because the tinted moisturizer is nice. But let's say she was getting photos done, we'd need a little bit more. So I'm going to so, use. And then I use a brush like this for for a foundation, like, uh, contour and the highlight. Contour, okay. And then, as I said, I have this style brush that I use for, for like the eyes or any detail mm -hmm. kind of contour. So like. keep in mind that brushes, eyeshadow brushes come in different sizes. So this one, I think is a little too big. Like okay. it literally covers your entire eyelid up into the crease. You would want to get something a little smaller, but you could use this as a blending brush too. If you didn't get the, uh -huh. if you didn't have the, the crease brush, if you didn't have this guy, you could use the tip of this yeah, that's what I do. The to, tip for the yep, mm -hmm. to just blend out those edges, just like this. What else do I have? I have a concealer brush. Okay. Um, I do have, I have like a little angled eyeliner brush, but it's pretty stiff. Oh, is it? Like, okay. When I've used eyeshadow to do that with the eyeliner, I just like you don't really want to rub it because it's really stiff. So I just more press it in. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, the, that's those are actually great tools. So, way to go. So now I'm going to use um, the Limelight Botanical Foundation, and this is a buffing brush. Okay, it's flat right at the top, rounded, it's bi-bristled, meaning <clears throat> you have some brushes that are taller and then other brushes that are softer or shorter, I'm sorry. And what that does is creates a softer application. So. I'm going to mix two colors for her. This particular foundation is 50% pigment. So all of that isn't even going to touch her face. That's how pigmented it is. And it's just ridiculous. <laughs> and I like this brush, but I can, if she wanted more coverage, you can use a sponge as well. So since we're being light and airy, we're using the buffing brush. Um, if you have any questions about the brushes, like we're just going too fast, put a comment down below um, and I will get back to it because now I'm following, or because I'm following this um, live, I will be able to answer your questions direct. Um, I also do lessons, so if you want to have more information for you specifically, please let me know and we can set up um, a consultation or a, a, for a lesson. And then... Um... Speaking of that, I was thinking I have um, several friends in business mm -hmm. who need to get headshots done periodically. Oh yeah, you know for their cards or for their business page. I totally do all that. And so I just was yeah, so Oliver would be a good one to do your, your headshots for. I ha I I do a lot of. If you don't have a photographer, I have a whole slew of photographers that do fantastic headshots. Um, not your standard, you know. Sears catalog <laughs> headshots, like actual updated current, very professional yet still individualistic photos. Huh. So depending on your style, I have a photographer for you. Wonderful. Yeah. None of this. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the buffing of this product is just oh, insane. Okay, now turn to the other side. There's really no difference other than the fact that this side has pigment or color, this side doesn't. It's more even. 
And so you can see the, the difference. This side is more even, this side is not. And that brush is really light. Like I thought with that flat top it would have a firmer touch, but it's no, really it's light. No, it's super, super light. It's because it's bi-bristled. Oh. Mm -hmm. Bi-bristled people. Bi, like B-I, not B-Y. <laughs> That's, I love uh, new vocabulary words. I swear, there's like new vocab words every day. <laughs> Like my, I'll I'll write a um a word that I've been using for a, for a long time in the industry, and my phone or autocorrect will correct it to some word that doesn't even come up. I'm like, <laughs> it's a real word, or at least I think it's a real word. I've at least been using it for years, so it's real to me. My autocorrect has been a little bit jacked up since the latest update. <laughs> has it? Just like it wants to correct to weird to weird things and like. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. My if turns into I would, like I apostrophe D. <laughs> I'm like, why? Why? I don't know. D and F are close, are on the, next to each other on the keyboard, but other than that, I have no idea why it does it. All right, so you might notice that I'm just doing circular motions, and this is just allowing me to um, buff the product in. When you use a foundation brush, you're sort of smearing it on. You're just it's sitting more like on the top. Sitting on the top. This one is really pushing it into all the tiny crevices. Now that's not necessarily going to work for everyone, but for her, for Erin, it is. If you feel like you need a little bit more blending when you're done with this, you can take your sponge. Okay. Can I feel what it feels like? Yeah, go ahead. So that's good. I really have a pet peeve against like really heavy feeling right? foundations, which is why I love our, our tinted moisturizer because it's not heavy and it's just, um, and it just gives light coverage. I don't, you know, generally like that. Right. Where it's like so um, thick that you don't look like a real you, person anymore. Mm -hmm. You look like a, a doll. <laughs> so what the botanical, so the botanical foundations, these are actually wax, beeswax base. Oh. So as they warm up to the skin, they will literally melt into your skin, and that's why I love it. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, here's a little trick. If you have any fallout, take your moisturizer or your eye cream. Look up. And what do you mean by fallout? The... So like when the eyeshadow starts okay. here and then it ends up down here, okay. yeah. that's fallout. So your eyeliner, because I use a little a more of a um, powdery product, right. and it's black, it shows up everywhere. So I'm just taking a Q-tip, and this is, you know, I cleaned all of that off from the underneath. With the moisturizer. With the moisturizer. I just happen to use oil-free. HydroPure. HydroLift, sorry. HydroPure is another line I used to work for. <laughs> so I find lines. a lot of the lines, like, we have a product called Revive, and I was looking at somebody else's has a product called Revive. Yeah, you right. Know, like, yeah, totally. It's a common skincare product. <laughs> For it's, us, it's an eye cream. It's the buzzword. <laughs> so I just damped, dampened my sponge just ever so slightly without picking up product. Now I'm just going to press this into the skin. So if you want it to look more seamless, more skin-like, you can do that. Also. A sponge it absorbs so what what would you use it for if in case you put too much foundation mm -hmm. if you put too much product on you're starting to look like your phantom of the opera <laughs> then you can take your sponge dampen it a little and press it into the area that is excessive and you can absorb some of that product so now I'm going to take a little bit more on the smaller end and touch up just... Uh, that's my sequin injury from Vegas who's touching up. What happened? <laughs> this is like two months ago. Well, maybe not quite. A month and a half? No, no, it's getting to two months ago. I was trying on a dress with sequins and I, like, later I Shut had this cut on my face and I was like, how on earth did I get this cut on my face? A dress cut you? It did. That's hilarious. It's my Vegas injury. But my skin is so sort of see-through, as you can tell, that, like... For two months, it's gonna still continue to show up. Are you putting um, smooth on it? The balm? No. You should. Okay. Smooth helps. Um, will help heal that faster. 
of course youthful, but you're already using youthful on top of it. Yeah, I was thinking maybe, um, I know uh, the lavish helps with scarring too, so. I just don't know about lavish being on the face. Like, yeah. Unless your face really needs that moisture, it's, it, I think it's too much. Too much. I've, been, I've seen people, you know, when they post their eczema and rosacea yeah. results, I'm like, ooh, lavish, but teach their own. Just because the bottle says do not put on the face doesn't mean you can't put on the face. Yeah, and I know I've heard from home office because people have asked, and they said it's okay, you know, as far as it's not gonna be irritating to the face. It might be too much moisture, as you say, but yeah. um, they just say to avoid the eye area. Yes. That's the, that's the official word, folks. <laughs> but I have met people there that are like, they want that lavish on the face because they want that really heavy um, okay. moisturizer. Um, all right, so we lose our light. Mm -hmm. We did lose our light. It's all right. Okay, so now her complexion is on, and look how even and solid that looks. But she still looks like her, yes. and it feels like her. Like I can touch her face and not worry about it like coming off and transferring on me. So now that that's on, I'm gonna let that melt into her skin, and I'm gonna use um, a lip brush to apply her lip color. And all honesty, unless you're applying it onto someone else, this is not 100% needed for your own application. All right. Like if you're gonna use, you know, a lip product, like a lot of people like glosses. They these have, ones are so adorable, by the way. Right, if I the, haven't told you these little ones from Limelight, they, you have There's like this, the whole kit, which is like out of my price range, makes sense for you as a makeup artist. Yeah, like for me to have, to have 16 lip colors. <laughs> but look at the, especially the little diamond ones. Aren't I mean, cute? those are cute. Those are the. They're just so cute. Those are the gloss ones. Um, you can easily separate them. But um, I'm gonna use these. They as have the testers. two little ones for the holidays. But, oh, yeah. um, show them that one. Cause I just think it's, the packaging. I mean, the products are good, but the packaging is adorable. especially adorable. You can hang that on the tree or wherever you want and. Or not, or just, you get one um, of the, it's the long wearing with color. You get the long wearing gloss. as well as the gloss, corresponding they're just, gloss. They're just in these tiny cute little packages. Actually, I met someone last weekend who's um, at a vendor event. She was saying how she adores tiny things. Maybe I should send a link to her. Okay, I have, a, I have a thing for miniatures. Yeah. Me and miniatures, man, I just want to, like, whatever it is. I, I'm like already considering of getting it, if it's a miniature <laughs> for sure. And then um, I wanted to ask you too, because I yes. saw you post recently about a new project that you're kind of um, coming up with, working with other artists. Yes. So Can you tell us about that? Well, so the premise is that I, I just came back from a month, or a month, a week long education convention called Class Where the Masters Teach, and so it's five days of just makeup, uh, learning from no. 15 of the top industry. And I followed you twice now that you've gone, and it's I love just getting that information oh my back. God, yeah. so, just you like, just look like you have so much fun. And... So if you ever come back from education, you tend to be inspired. You just uh -huh. want to do everything. So the project that I am uh, helping to, or that I'm producing is one of, it's kind of like a artistic telephone game. So the premise is that the only thing you're inspired by is whatever's in front of you. So if it's just the model, or if it's the model in wardrobe, or if it's the model in the hair, you as the individual artist will be inspired by that thing. And then at the end, we all take a photo. The photographer tends to be last because then they will finish the composition. You know, whatever the set designer did, whatever the stylist had the model wear, however the model feels to pose, hair, makeup, that all of those different factors come in, the photographer's gonna take that picture and then we're gonna come in at the end and view what we all created. So hence the artistic telephone game. Because usually it's more interactive, you know, everyone knows what the look is uh -huh. be beforehand. This time you don't know until you're called on set. So I'm really excited about that. I've got a few people who are just stoked and it's the new year, you know, let's just, get some new life, new blood in I there. I love how collaborative it is, you know, how the artwork ends up being, you know, you and the hairstylist and the 
like you said, the set designer and mm -hmm. the photographer and how they choose the lighting and choose the angles and the um, and the model. You know, like everybody's putting their creative input into exactly. the final product. Right, because as far as you know, artist goes, or like when I do my job, it's always about the client. If the client wants something and that goes with their vision, they're paying me, so I can't say, mm, I don't think that's right. I don't think your vision's right. You know, that's just, that was just rude, first of all. And um, second of all, it's not your project. You're there as a, as a well, you're offering facility. Your, your you're facility. professional mm -hmm. education, like, exactly. you know, what's gonna look good on their face, but. But in the end, if they don't like your idea, right. they're gonna follow theirs, which is totally fine. So this time, we artists can now come together and create for the sake of creating. So I'm excited about that. I've got a few people really interested in that. I've never done anything like this. Like I've never posted a challenge before. So this will be fun to bring in all of my friends and peers to, and for us to actually create something and put our name to it that is like 100% our own basically. Okay. So this color is called Creme Brulee. It is the Enduring Lip Color. I use the lip, lip brush um, to apply it. So now I'm just gonna apply the gloss. Once again, using my, yeah. And these have, the um, this is what the product normally would be applied It's a doe with. foot, mm-hmm. Right. So usually if you're at home, this is why I don't think lip brush is really necessary for a consumer. Or if Unless it's in a pot, right? Like, yeah, if it's in a pot, then definitely use a, a brush. But, um, if it's got, it, most products have their own applicators, so lip brushes, um, almost not necessary. Or if you want to feel extra, <laughs> you can totally use a brush. And what do you think of the the new uh, smooth lip colors? Oh my god! <laughs> I have them right here. If you guys haven't tried these, all I'm going to say is for a lip tint, Right, they're calling it lip tints, right? Lip tints, the smooth, thick lip tints. This has so much pigment. I I put it on and I was like, well, that's way too much. And I just did the bottom lip. I had to do this in order to spread it around. But these lip tints, I do hope that they come back as regular products. Yeah, they're just- And with more. They keep teasing us, and so we're not quite sure if they're gonna come back with the same or someone's different. Right. Or whether they're gonna come out with more colors of the same. I'm or... like, I've got two direct brands, <laughs> two direct sales brands. Like, there's a lot of products that I wanna buy and I just can't <laughs> afford it sometimes. Like, I've spent a lot of money on makeup already this year, and that's just with Ever and with Limelight. I am really happy, but homeboy's got a mortgage to pay. <laughs> so now, oh, I'm gonna use this brush because I don't, actually I'm gonna use this brush. So this is that domed powder brush. It fits the contours of the face. And I'm using this to apply her, her translucent powder to help set everything. Um, the translucent powder is great if you're oily and if you're not oily, this just makes all the cream products you put on last longer. So pressing it into the skin or into the palette, tap off excess, and then press it into the skin. And how soft does that feel? Very soft. And because, remember, it's a soft bristles and very bendy, you're gonna get a very light application. Oh, that reminds me, I have one other brush that's the one with the Japanese name that's really short. Do you know what I'm talking about? Jap Japan has some awesome brushes. But it's like a little oh, Japanese. It's kabuki brush. Maybe it's got like a short wand, and then it's just. Um, oh yeah, so a kabuki brush is basically this. It's, yeah. It's, it's just a, that. A little smaller than that. Yeah. Than I am. Um, but that, it has a short, like you said, a short wand. Mm -hmm, they tend to. It's kabuki brushes tend to have um, shorter, um, shorter handles. That's just how they've been made. Um, comes from the old Japanese traditions of not actually applying makeup, but from applying paints, I believe. Oh. Yeah. So now that the tinted moist, or translucent powder is on, and that this is more a, now of a powder finish, not a cream finish, I can actually take my blush, my powder blush, and apply it and not worry about streaks. So I'm gonna take one of my favorites. This one, I think it's called Possible. It's the same as the NARS, NARS Orgasm color. If you're, if you're not a 
If you're not uh, familiar with an orgasm, if you're not familiar with that color orgasm by NARS, uh, it's a must, and this is basically it. it has that same gold, gold undertone, um, peach, pink um, top note or top color, and I'm using the angled brush to no. fit the shape of her cheek and to brush it on. I used to never bother with um, blush because my skin is just always so rosy. You know, I've even gone out and, you know, mom, how's my makeup looking? Oh, yeah. maybe too much blush. Yeah. I didn't put yeah. blush on. Um, but now that I'm <clears throat> in my 40s, I'm finding, you know, my rosy glow is maybe not so rosy. I'm, I'm beginning to understand the purpose of blush. Mm -hmm. Especially once I put on, like, say, concealer and stuff like that, and you're like, oh, it I'm, I'm, gives my, your face yeah. shape, and it also gives your face color. So if you actually have a lot of rosiness, you can manipulate your uh, complexion product, your uh, complexion application, to make your natural rosiness look like blush. Okay. So I am softening this blush because all I want is to bring some color to the skin after we've whited you out, basically. And ta-da! Come in. Soft. It's so pretty. Easy. I have an event tonight. Now I don't have to do my makeup. Exactly. <laughs> and all of this was possible because, number one, these brushes, well, they are made very well weighted handle like you can feel the weight difference okay. that gives you more control when you're doing your strokes um reminds me of knives like you know when they yes. teach you how to get a knife like you're supposed to get the right balance a good balance that, right? so to me this is a good balance um it's also synthetic brushes i prefer synthetic most uh, uh makeup brands are now going um synthetic because it's uh more friendly um you know environmentally friendly but also because you can do both cream and powder formulations. Um, I also love the fact that it's just sleek. Like when you have your brushes out, like in your little container or something, or displayed out on the on like a towel, I just think it looks more professional. And you know, it's when, more of an experience. It's more of an experience, right? like, exactly. It's more of like, oh, I'm pampering myself with these nice. Tools, right. rather than I'm slapping stuff on my face. Exactly. And and my whole philosophy, and I probably yours too, although for you know editorial it's different. But for you know, I want to bring out people's natural beauty. You know, yes. it's not about covering up and hiding. It's about accentuating what yes. you have. Right? That's actually my philosophy with makeup. I would prefer to bring out your natural beauty versus covering up whatever it is. There's a few exceptions, like unless you really think your blemish is your best friend, I'm gonna cover that guy up. But um, you know, I'm not gonna slap on makeup so that you look like Kim Kardashian. I'm gonna put makeup on you so that you look like the best version of yourself. And that's yeah. what I think. To me, that's what beauty is. It's yeah. not trying to be someone else. It's trying to be the best version of Cause you. Because I've seen these YouTube videos with people doing like all this contour, right? And from like the beginning to the end, it's. Like, if those two people walked by, I would not recognize them as the same person. Right, 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 you know? right. And I'm, that seems weird to me. Like, I'm like, yes, you did a nice makeup application. I'm like, yeah. you look beautiful, but you don't look like the same person anymore. Yeah, let's not get started on YouTube. Like, <laughs> I'm, like, if you're a YouTuber and you're watching this, go ahead, nail me to the cross. But I'm going to say that unless you do clients and unless you are, um, you know, doing different people and makeup on you other people other than yourself I'm gonna say you're just an enthusiast or you're just an influencer and if you are great let people know more about makeup however I'm gonna be here to teach them how to do it properly because you contouring your face highlighting in every which way um, might be great for photos for certain small aspects of the actual cur uh, industry but for the most part, I'm not going to use any of those techniques. So when I do lessons, I actually break down some of those barriers that people learn or um, to, uh, what's it called? What's the word I'm looking for? Uh, habits that people learn so that it fits to their needs. I'm not going to make Aaron do makeup like how I do makeup for anyone else. I'm going to teach Aaron how to do makeup for her, for her lifestyle, for her needs. 
if she wants to spend $5, I'm gonna give her like a $5 application. Which, <laughs> and, or if she wants to spend $500, I'm gonna teach her how to do a $500 application. Okay. So, that's what I do for makeup. All right. It's glowing, I love it. Yes. Yes. Anything else? Um, I'm well, ready. okay. I'm if, ready. if you are interested in any of these brushes or have more questions, please leave a comment below. I will also put in my link to Limelight so that you can kind of check things out. Um, if you are in this greater Seattle area, I'm in Capitol Hill, 12th and John. Please feel free to come in and visit me. Um, I do facials, waxing, tinting, and I use Ever and Limelight and basically anything that looks that will work on someone's skin. I don't specifically stick to those two products. I do other things, use other things that I know um, are industry um, proven. So, thanks for joining me. Yes, thanks for coming on and yeah. sharing about what you do. Yeah, have a good one, guys. Okay, bye.